Distal radius fractures concept. The fracture could be extraarticular or intraarticular. Intraarticular fractures are usually worse than extraarticular fractures. Fracture of the distal radius has many types and classifications. Each type will require a specific management and not all of them could be treated with a cast. There may be DRU fracture XJ or ulnar steroid process fracture or injury. The ulnar steroid process injury may not need to be fixed. So you're going to fix the radius first, then test the joint. If the joint is grossly unstable, then fix the radio ulnar joint, usually with some K wires. Or you can fix the ulnar steroid process if the fracture is big. Extensor carbide and nares tendon entrapment can occur and can cause irreducible dorsal dislocation of the ulna. Osteoporosis. It's an important topic. Osteoporosis is a decrease in bone strength. The osteoporotic bone is at risk of fracturing at the hip, spine, and wrist. DEXA scan is used to study the bone mass in patients that have wrist fracture to prevent future fractures of the spine and hip. Wrist fractures occur at a younger age than fractures of the spine or the hip so you can detect the osteopenia or the osteoporosis early and treat it before they break the spine or the hip. Extensor pollicis longus rupture. Extensor pollicis longus tendon is commonly ruptured due to non-displaced fracture of the distal radius. They call it attrition rupture. It can also occur from prominent hardware. When screws are used in the plate, they should not penetrate the dorsal cortex to avoid injuries to the extensor pollicis longus tendon. Rupture of the extensor pollicis longus tendon is usually treated with transfer of the extensor in this tendon. Note that flexor pollicis longus rupture can occur with prominent volar hardware. Vitamin C for reflex sympathetic dystrophy. We use 500 mg for vitamin C every day for 50 days. That should decrease the incidence of reflex sympathetic dystrophy. Acute carpal tunnel syndrome. Carpal tunnel syndrome is a common condition following a distal radius fracture. If it occurs before surgery, you will need to do surgical release of the carpal tunnel and fixation of the fracture and should be done urgently. It can also occur following RIF of the distal radius fracture. The patient will have dense numbness in the distribution of the median nerve after surgery, especially after some uh, supraclavicular or regional anesthesia that will wear off. So you will need to do immediate open carpal tunnel release. Treatment of distal radius. Therapy may not be needed routinely. It had the same effect and result as home exercises. It is important to get the fingers moving as soon as possible. There is no need for early range of motion of the rest, even if the radius fixation is stable, but you got to keep moving these fingers. How about surgery? Surgery, you can use dorsal plate or volar plate. It has no difference in the complication. The dorsal plate is not used frequently, but it is used for dorsal shearing fractures. The volar plate is used routinely for most of the fractures. The external flexor is less desirable. The American Academy of Orthopedic Surgeon 
was less than 10 degree of dorsal tilt. The normal amount of tilt is 12 degree volar tilt. It also wants radial inclination angle loss of less than 10 degree. The normal angle is 23 degree. Also radial shortening should be less than 3 mm. The intraarticular step off should be less than 2 mm. Arthritis correlates with a step off of more than 2 mm. The arthritis may not be symptomatic. With older patients, you can go with non-anatomic reduction and casting. Patient younger than 55 years of age, surgery is recommended for optimal reduction if the fracture is displaced. For a patient above the age of 55, the optimal treatment is not clear. However, I prefer to do surgery if the fracture is displaced. Radius malunion can create a dizzy deformity which can be treated with osteotomy and correction of the deformity. I hope this video is helpful to you and thank you for listening. This video is for educational purposes only. Please consult your doctor before you make any decision about your medical care.